Hello, hello. This is Cayman. I am going to read a little bit for you of my favorite book in the world, The Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby, with a preface on it, forward by uh, Dr. Matthew J. Coley. I, I certainly apologize if that's not the correct uh, pronunciation of his name. B R U C C O L I. Coley. Can I? Can I do that? I don't know if you can see that. But get this, because of the research that I did on Mr. Piccoli, Dr. Piccoli, <clears throat> he um, was the, the F. Scott Fitzgerald scholar. He taught at the University of South Carolina for many, many years um, and wrote about 50 books on various authors, but his his mainstay was F. Scott Fitzgerald, and one of his favorite books was The Great Gatsby, which he said he read over and over again. So this preface is beautiful. It's incredible. And this is the beginning of our odyssey, and I'm so glad that I have this book. So again, uh, if you can get this particular book, which has notes, detailed notes about F. Scott Fitzgerald and about uh, The Great Gatsby written by this um, eminent scholar, this the author of, um, of uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. He's, he's the person who, who knew him uh, quite, quite, uh, quite well. Let me read a little bit of the back of the cover. All right. And it says, F. Scott Fitzgerald was born in St. Paul, Minnesota in 1896, attended Princeton University, and published his first novel, This Side of Paradise, in 1920. That same year, he married Zelda Sayer, and the couple divided their time between New York, Paris, and the Riviera, becoming part of the American expatriate circle that included Gertrude Stein, er Ernest Hemingway, and John Dos Passos. Fitzgerald was a major new literary voice, and his masterpieces included The Beautiful and the Damned, The Great Gatsby, and Tender is the Night. He died of a heart attack in 1940 at the age of 44 while working on The Love of the Last Tycoon. His sharp social insight and breathtaking lyricism, Fitzgerald stands out as one of the most important writers of the 20th century. It's really great. Very excited, I must say. Here's the preface. It starts out with a quote by Mr. Fitzgerald. What little I've accomplished has been by the most laborious and uphill work. And I wish now I'd never relaxed or looked back, but said at the end of the great Gatsby, I've found my line. From now on, this comes first. This is my immediate duty. Without this, I am nothing. F. Scott Fitzgerald. The Great Gatsby does not proclaim the nobility of the human spirit. It is not politically correct. It does not reveal how to solve the problems of life. It delivers no fashionable or comforting messages. It is just a masterpiece. The best reason to read literature is for pleasure. One gauge of F. Scott Fitzgerald's achievement is that many admiring readers are unaware of the complexity of The Great Gatsby because the novel is a pleasure to read. It is therefore necessary to invoke his 1922 pre-Gatsby declaration, quote, I want to write something new, something extraordinary and beautiful and simple, plus intricately patterned, unquote. Masterpieces are not accidents. Geniuses know what they are doing or trying to do. They need luck, but knowing how to use the luck is an essential element of a writer's equipment. F. Scott Fitzgerald, 1846 to 1940, was a romantic and even tragic figure. A brilliant writer who achieved success with his first novel, This Side of Paradise, in 1920, participated in the glamorous X patriot life in France during the 1920s and then experienced a series of personal and professional blows during the 30s. 
The Fitzgerald legend has attracted readers to his work, but his words matter not the mostly distorted and inaccurate anecdotes of dissipation. Between 1920 and 1940, he published four novels, including Tender is the Night, <clears throat> a play. Oh, I'd like to see that play. I don't know that play. 160 short stories and essays. He was writing a superb Hollywood novel, The Last Tycoon, when he died. Assessing his career for his daughter, Scotty, he wrote from Hollywood at a low point in 1939, quote, I am not a great man, but sometimes I think the impersonal and objective quality of my talent and the sacrifices in it, in pieces, to preserve its essential value has some sort of epic grandeur, unquote. Fitzgerald was not the playboy of American literature, although certain fans like to think he was an irresponsible writer. He was an alcoholic, as were other major American writers, but he was a serious writer and a hard worker. He did not scribble The Great Gatsby drunk. The novel had a three-year process of evolution, and Fitzgerald tested his material in the short stories that preceded The Great Gatsby. The gestation of the characters and themes can readily be observed in Dice, Brass Knuckles, and Guitar, which published in 1923, The Sensible Thing in 1924, and particularly Winter Dreams in 1922. The book, or the short story, Absolution in 1924, was salvaged from a lost early version of a novel that became The Great Gatsby. The novel developed through layers and of drafts and achieved its ultimate brilliance when Fitzgerald revised and rewrote it in the galley proofs. At the stage when most authors are finished with their work, he was still perfecting The Great Gatsby. Published facsimiles of Fitzgerald's manuscripts and works in progress provide instruction on the art of his fiction, which was the art of rewriting. The Great Gatsby is a classic, a novel that is read spontaneously by pleasure seekers and under duress by students. A popular classroom fallacy holds that classics are universal and timeless. Literature has staying power, but it is subject to metamorphosis. Every reader's response to a work of fiction is determined by his or her presuppositional bias, beliefs, experience, and knowledge. Fitzgerald's ebulliently, Fitzgerald, sorry, Fitzgerald ebulliently proclaimed in 1920 that, quote, an author ought to write for the youth of his generation, the critics of the next, and the schoolmasters of ever afterwards, unquote. Although this edict, perhaps a prophecy, was triumphantly fulfilled by the great Gatsby, the novel was written by a man of his own time, about his time. The Great Gatsby was published in 1925. Therefore, many of its details now seem as remote as those in the world of Charles Dickens. Great fiction is great social history. Fitzgerald's work has become automatically identified with an American decade, <clears throat> the Jazz Age, which he named, or the Roaring Twenties, or the Boom. Since the Great Gatsby is the defining novel of the 20s, which has become trivialized and vulgarized by people who weren't there. It is necessary and useful to provide a corrective assessment of that era and Fitzgerald's response to it. <coughs> I'm so 20. I'm so sorry. <coughs> the 20s were not a 10-year binge during which everyone got rich and danced to Charleston and speakeasies while drinking bootleg hooch. Certainly, the reaction to America's participation in World War I, which ended on 11 November 1918, triggered disillusionment, moral reevaluation, social experiment, and hedonism. Although Fitzgerald joined the parties and chronicled them, he wrote in judgment. The 20s were primarily an era of possibilities and aspiration, a dominant Fitzgerald theme. In Echoes of the Jazz Age, he wrote, quote, it was an age of miracles, 
It was an age of art. It was an age of excess. And it was an age of satire, unquote. It was also an age of achievement, especially in American literature. Ernest Hemingway, William Faulkner, Thomas Wolfe, Willa Cather, Sinclair Lewis, Ring Lardner, Eugene O'Neill, Do John Dos Passos, Wallace Stevens, E. E. Cummings, Ezra Pound, T. S. Eliot. Can you imagine being alive during that period of time? I'm I'm embarrassed to tell you the few names that I know of the modern era that that match that, that match this that could come close to matching this. I have not. Uh, I I can't tell you. All I can think of right now is Tom Clancy and John Grisham. Is that not sad? My God. I'm so glad these folks wrote so that we can still read what they had to write. I have to stop there. Uh, we'll pick up um, on preface page 10, second paragraph, and hope you get the book. Let's have fun with it.